what I'd like to do today is send you a little verbal postcard of some of the work that we're doing at the Center for Ocean Solutions that is directly engaging uh, coastal planners and managers and decision makers around Monterey Bay. Um, but first, I should probably explain what the Center for Ocean Solutions is. We are a unique collaboration that has been forged um, through a generous gift from the David and Lucille Packard Foundation. We were formed about five years ago, and we're a collaboration between Stanford's Woods Institute for the Environment and Hopkins Marine Station right here in Pacific Grove, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. And the whole idea behind this collaboration is to bring all of the scientists and researchers that span our organizations who are focused on ocean and coastal systems and who come from diverse disciplines. So we're collaborating with oceanographers, marine biologists, marine ecologists, lawyers, economists, sociologists, communication experts, you name it to tackle some of the biggest challenges facing the ocean and human communities that depend on thriving ocean and coastal systems. Um, today, we're gonna dive right into this topic of climate change. Now, many of you are familiar with some of the impacts of climate change in the Monterey Bay area, and this set of photos is an example that some of you may um, relate to. On the, the left, you have a picture of the old officers club at Stillwell Hall. And this was a place that officers from Fort Ord would um, go to and often on their way out um, on a deployment would stop and have a, a great celebration and um, um, hang out with family. Uh, and this, this club was a real icon on the coast. Now it, um, decades and decades ago, in, in fact, the, the left-hand photo is from 1972, was experiencing some of the forces that we are now seeing being exacerbated by climate change along our shoreline here in Monterey Bay. Um, extreme conditions with, with storms and um, incredible coastal erosion between two and six feet of erosion per year along this particular coastline. And so the Army Corps of Engineers saw fit to move in with the bulldozers and dump a bunch of debris on the shoreline. You see this huge revetment here. It's um, created out of rock and concrete in an attempt to try to protect this building that was so treasured. Well, the Army Corps of Engineers had to do this again and again and again and again. It was really a vicious cycle of trying to dump junk on the beach. Now, you probably notice a few things about this. Um, if you look very carefully, you can see that the revetment occupies the beach. So folks like beachcombers and those who are doing shoreline fishing or surfing aren't able to traverse in front of that area with that revetment because the ocean is coming right up against the revetment. So it's occupying the beach. It's um, taking the beach away from us. It's also fixing the back of the beach and preventing those dunes behind the beach from contributing sand supply into the beach system. So it's, it's occupying the beach, it's drowning the beach, and it's preventing these dunes from being part of the whole system um, that they're meant to be a part of. So this solution to um, addressing climate change, sea level rise, and coastal erosion, coastal flooding and inundation often is not successful. Now we're gonna be facing um, sea level rise over this next 75 years or so that will look something like a foot by mid-century and something between three and five feet by the end of the century. That will only exacerbate this um, coastal erosion. It will definitely have an impact on that saltwater intrusion that Rosemary was talking about too. Um, and will cause increased flooding and inundation, especially during those big storms, those big El Nino storms. Um, that we've become familiar with. So the Army Corps realized 10 years ago that they could take away that revetment and look what happens, the beach comes back and you still have access to the beach um, with that great parking lot and uh, the ability to hop down. 
Now, um, a word or two about our methodology at the Center for Ocean Solutions, and I would be remiss as a researcher if I didn't tell you a bit about our methodology. We are what we call a knowledge to action organization. So we're really after actionable solutions, but in order to get to those solutions and get them implemented, you have to deeply understand the folks that you're working with, understand what their constraints and goals are, and um, work side by side with them and co-create. And we've been doing that not only with coastal planners and decision makers here in the Monterey Bay area, and specifically with Santa Cruz County, but also with our colleagues at the Natural Capital Project at Stanford University. So Gretchen Daly and Mary Ruckelshaus's outfit, their team of modelers and economists and coastal engineers have been right there alongside us. And they've been helping us work with these coastal planners from Santa Cruz County to better account for the role that coastal habitats are playing in this context of climate change. Um, and by I, what I mean by coastal habitats, I'm referring to dunes, beaches, wetlands, kelp forests, um, salt marshes, uh, seagrass beds, these are all coastal habitats that can play a role in affording greater protection for human communities and infrastructure. In this case, the planners in Santa Cruz County were particularly interested in our helping them understand how they could better protect the pipes, the sewage system, the storm drain system that was part of their whole water management um, um, infrastructure. And what they asked us to do is take a look at what kind of role were the existing coastal habitats playing in terms of um, reducing vulnerability of this whole system. And then if we chose targeted areas like the um, San Lorenzo River Lagoon area and the Aptos Lagoon area and tried different options of adding restoration of coastal wetlands, how much more coastal protection could we get? And we were able to demonstrate, as you can see with this histogram, that we could reduce coastal vulnerability or increase coastal protection by targeted restoration of coastal wetlands by 10%. Now, you may think that that 10% may be a drop in the bucket, for, but for towns like Capitola um, and Santa Cruz, where the amount and the value of the infrastructure at stake and the communities and the disadvantaged households that are less resilient to these acute uh, events, um, it really can mean a lot. And so much so that other counties in California have asked us to work with them to do the same kind of work. They have particular geographies in Sonoma, Marin, and we're back with Santa Cruz and Monterey County that they want to explore because they realize that they can get co-benefits out of this restored wetland um, uh, endeavor. Coho salmon, for example, and many of our commercial fisheries depend on these coastal wetlands. So they're not only giving back to the human community, but they're also giving back to our coastal and ocean community. In closing, I just want you to see that this was taken March 1st, 2014. So this is real. And if we can make a measurable difference in the amount of protection afforded our infrastructure and our human communities here in California, especially in Monterey Bay, then we will have connected our researchers at Stanford with real deci decision makers to make meaningful change in their lives. And I'm really proud of that. Thank you.